Dams are by far the largest and most impactful structures that we build, designed to hold back vast amounts of water, whether it be for power generation, irrigation systems, water provision, or to reshape the landscape. Dams are a vital part of our infrastructure. So, join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the biggest mega dams on Earth. Number 15. San Roque Dam, Philippines At an estimated cost of $1.2 billion, construction began on the San Roque Dam in the Philippines in 1998, and it was officially opened in May of 2003. It's positioned on the Agno River, which is on Luzon Island around 124 miles north of Manila, and it was built to create a reservoir that could be used to generate electricity in the attached hydroelectric plant, as well as providing water to local farmers for irrigation. The dam wall itself is 656 feet tall and three-quarters of a mile long. It holds back a reservoir that has a surface area of almost five square miles and holds around 220,000 cubic feet of water. Three vertical shafts in the power station lead to Francis water turbines, and these give the facility a rating of 411 megawatts, something it's able to achieve throughout the dry and wet seasons. Not only is this power important for the local region, but the controlled levels of water are used to irrigate around 273 square miles of land downstream, which enables farmers to diversify their crops during the dry seasons and has significantly improved food production. Number 14. WAC Bennett Dam, Canada Found on the Peace River in British Columbia, the WAC Bennett Dam is an earth-filled dam that was built between 1961 and 1968. It's 610 feet tall and 1.3 miles long, and forms a reservoir called Williston Lake that has a surface area of 680 square miles. It was named after the Premier of British Columbia at the time, who was instrumental in raising the $750 million needed for its construction, and with a rated capacity of 2,700 megawatts from its 10 turbines. The hydroelectric facility that's built into the dam provides around a third of British Columbia's energy needs. While it's undoubtedly been a success from an economic perspective, the dam hasn't been without its controversy because of how much land was flooded. Not only did it cause the destruction of 350,000 acres of forest land and the plant and wildlife that thrive there, but it also displaced members of the First Nation and isolated those that were able to remain. Lawsuits in recent years have resulted in large payments being made as compensation for this loss and show just how complicated the issues of round dam construction can be. Number 13. Aswan Dam, Egypt Holding the record for being the largest embankment dam on Earth, the Aswan Dam was built in Egypt between 1960 and 1970. Crossing the Nile by the city of Aswan, it was actually the second dam to be built in that location after the lower dam was completed in 1902, and the project was seen as crucial to Egypt's economic development. For thousands of years, the banks of the Nile have been fertile grounds thanks to the annual floodwaters that brought nutrients to an otherwise harsh environment. But while the floods are predictable, the extent of them isn't. This means that in some years there'd be a perfect balance, but in others there'd either be too much water that would destroy crops or nowhere near enough which would lead to a drought. The completion of the new dam at Aswan finally gave control over these floodwaters, and it's meant that the flow can be regulated and used for irrigation and energy production at the same time. The dam is 364 feet tall and 2.4 miles long. It's produced a reservoir called Lake Nasser that covers an area of over 2,000 square miles and contains around 32 cubic miles of water. Despite requiring the relocation of 100,000 people, the destruction of a number of historical sites, and long-term effects on coastal erosion, the dam is seen as a resounding success for the management of water along the lower parts of the Nile, and it comes with the added benefit of an installed energy production capacity of 2,100 megawatts. Number 12. Cochiti Dam, United States Around 50 miles to the north of Albuquerque in New Mexico, there's a huge dam called the Cochiti Dam that crosses the Rio Grande. To stretch across the river, it's 251 feet tall and five and a half miles long. Behind it is the relatively small Cochiti Lake, and while it's formed a popular recreational pool, its main purpose is to control the runoff from the surrounding catchment area into the river and to limit the amount of sediment that makes its way into the Rio Grande as well. Work on the dam first began in 1965, and as a national project, it was done by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. It was completed by 1973 and, by all accounts, has successfully achieved the original aims of the scheme. But as is unfortunately common with large developments like this, it came at a social cost. 
It was opposed from the beginning by the Cochiti Keres Pueblo people, who relied on the land that was flooded by the reservoir for agricultural use. It took almost 40 years, but in 2001, the Army Corps of Engineers made an official public apology to them and have made attempts at restitution. Number 11, Nurek Dam, Tajikistan. Built on the Vakash River in Tajikistan between 1961 and 1980, at a time when the country was still part of the Soviet Union, the Nurek Dam project was mainly devised for energy production, but also to help manage water supplies for local agricultural land. It's 980 feet tall and about 2,300 feet long, and has an unusual design whereby it's made of a central cement core to create an impermeable barrier that's surrounded by a huge amount of rock and earth. Within the dam are nine generators that produce up to 3,000 megawatts, and this was a game changer for the country, as it still accounts for around 70% of its total energy needs. The reservoir behind it is the largest in Tajikistan and has a surface area of 38 square miles, which because of its depth holds around 2.5 cubic miles of water. Most of this, of course, is channeled through the hydroelectric generators. But when the reservoir was created, engineers also built an 8.6-mile-long Dangara irrigation tunnel that provides water to a 300-square-mile region of farmland. Number 10. Samara Dam, Russia Built as part of the volga kama cascade of dams along the Volga River in the Samara Oblast of Russia, the Samara Dam is a huge embankment dam that was constructed between 1950 and 1957. At 171 feet tall and 1.7 miles long, it created the Kubyashev Reservoir that itself has a surface area of 2,400 square miles and holds around 13.7 cubic miles of water. The idea for the dam was first suggested in 1910, after relocating tens of thousands of people, prison laborers were used to complete the project. It's fitted with 20 turbines to give an installed capacity of about 2,400 megawatts, and this energy is used to help cover peak loads and maintain the frequency stability of Russia's unified power system. One of the biggest challenges with this dam was that the river is a major trade route, and a traditional design would have completely blocked off the passage of any ships. To overcome this, a series of locks were also built, and these are still able to handle larger steamer ships in a way that adds very little to the journey time. Number 9. San Luis Dam, United States Located in Merced County, California, the San Luis Dam is an earth-filled embankment dam that was designed to collect excess runoff water from the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta during the rainy season in winter and spring, so it can then be used during the drier months. The dam, which is 382 feet tall and 1.5 miles long, was built between 1963 and 1968, and the San Luis Reservoir behind it was first filled the following year. When at capacity, it covers an area of 19.8 square miles and holds approximately 0.6 cubic miles of water. This water is mainly used for the irrigation of the San Joaquin Valley and supplies more than a million acres of land, but it's also used to drive eight turbines at the William R. Gianelli Power Plant that has an installed generating capacity of 424 megawatts. The San Luis Dam has transformed the region, but as the climate changes, there are concerns that it may not be enough for the coming years. There's currently a proposal to raise the dam by a further 20 feet, which would increase total capacity and help overcome the trend of reducing rainfall, particularly during the summer. Number 8. Oroville Dam, United States Also in California, the Oroville Dam is a zoned earth-filled dam that was built across the Feather River near the city of Oroville. It was constructed between 1961 and 1968, and at 770 feet high, holds the record of being the tallest dam in the country. It's 1.3 miles long, and behind the wall is Lake Oroville, which is the second largest reservoir in California. It has a surface area of 24.7 square miles, and when at capacity is able to hold up to a cubic mile of water. Connected to it is the Edward Hyatt Power Plant, which is the largest underground power facility in the United States, and this has an installed capacity of 819 megawatts. The main purpose of the dam, though, was to control flood waters and to provide water for irrigation during the hotter months of the year and it channels water into the California aqueduct system that's a major lifeline for the surrounding areas. In recent years, there have been several concerning incidents at the dam, such as cracks discovered and faulty machinery, and this became potentially dangerous in 2017 when the spillway failed. The spillway is used to release excess capacity from the reservoir when it's full, and the risk was so great that it necessitated the evacuation of more than 188,000 people living near the dam. It has now been completely restructured, though, so it was believed to be as safe as it ever was. Number 7. Mangla Dam, Pakistan 
Built between 1961 and 1965, the Mangla Dam is on the Jhelum River in Pakistan, occupied Kashmir. Due to the way rivers flow through the country and the Indus Water Treaty that was signed with India in 1960 that restricted how certain rivers could be used in Pakistan, there was a real need to regulate the flow of the Jhelum River, so it was predictable throughout the year for irrigation. The dam is 482 feet high and 1.9 miles wide, but it wasn't the only structure needed to form the Mangala Lake behind it. Also built were a 3.2-mile long dike and an additional smaller dam, and this allowed for the reservoir to develop with a surface area of 97 square miles. To do all of this, 110,000 local residents and more than 280 towns and villages had to be relocated, with a large number taking up the opportunity to leave the country altogether and instead move to the UK. Initially, the dam was successful in providing much-needed water to farmland, reducing flooding and for production of electricity. But it soon became clear that huge amounts of sediment were beginning to build up, and this reduced its overall capacity. A project began in 2004 that raised the dam wall by 30 feet, and it's likely this will have to happen again within the next decade or so. Number 6. Gardner Dam, Canada Located on the South Saskatchewan River in the Saskatchewan province of Canada, the Gardner Dam was built between 1959 and 1967 to divert water for agricultural and commercial means, and also to generate electricity for the surrounding region. At 210 feet tall and 3.1 miles across, it is one of the largest embankment dams in the world, and has created Lake Diefenbaker, which has a capacity of 2.3 cubic miles worth of water. From the lake, there are two gravity-fed aqueducts that supply water to several downstream reservoirs, so it can be used for irrigation, drinking water, and various other uses. And a $4 billion expansion project is currently underway to significantly expand the amount of land that benefits from the water in the lake. This development is, of course, a massive boost for local industry, but the power generation at the dam has become equally as important. It's fitted with three turbines at the Kotu Creek Hydroelectric Station, and combined, they give an installed capacity of 186 megawatts. Number 5. Oahe Dam, United States Found just to the north of Pierre, the capital city of South Dakota, the Oahe Dam sits across the Missouri River and creates a reservoir that's so big it stretches 231 miles upstream into North Dakota. Designed to control floods, improve navigation, generate power, and to provide water for irrigation, the dam was commissioned in the 1940s specifically because of the risk of flooding, and was built between 1948 and 1962. It's 245 feet high and 1.7 miles long, but amazingly the width at its base measures just over two-thirds of a mile. Lake Oahe, which is the reservoir behind the dam, covers an area of 584 square miles and can hold a volume of 6.8 cubic miles of water. The power station that's connected to it has an installed capacity of 786 megawatts from its seven turbine generators. And not only does the structure have functional benefits, but leisure ones too, with 51 designated recreational sites around it. While the dam cost around $340 million at the time, the biggest price to be paid was by the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation and the Standing Rock Reservation. More than 200,000 acres of land was taken by eminent domain, much of which was prime agricultural land. And with the loss of historic homes and traditional ways of life, the displaced communities are still feeling the effects. Number 4. Houtribdek, Netherlands Throughout history, because of the low-lying land, people in the Netherlands have undertaken projects to reclaim regions from the ocean. The most ambitious of these took place during the 20th century, when the Zouderzee Works commenced, which is a network of dams, dikes, land reclamation, and waterworks in a shallow inlet of the North Sea that would improve flood protection and reclaim large areas for agriculture. Of all the structures that were built, the Houtribdek Dam is by far the most impressive. Connecting the cities of Lelestad and Ankahosa, it separates two large lakes, one of which is planned to eventually be completely reclaimed. It was a huge engineering feat, because the dam is 223 feet wide and 18.6 miles long. As there's no water flow, this wasn't an ideal place to build a power station, but instead a road was put on top of the mound to connect the two cities, and this is now used by around 8,500 vehicles a day. If you ever visit there, it's worth stopping at the emergency harbor that's at the halfway point along the dam, because that's where you'll find a restaurant with one of the most unusual and largest human design surroundings you'll find anywhere on Earth. Number 3. Ataturk Dam, Turkey 
classified as a zoned fill rock dam with a central core. The Ataturk Dam, which was formerly known as the Krababa Dam, was built between 1983 and 1990 across the Euphrates River in Turkey. It was needed to provide electricity and irrigation water, and measuring 554 feet high and 1.1 miles long, is claimed to be the third largest dam in the world. The Ataturk Reservoir behind it has a surface area of 315 square miles and a capacity of about 11.7 cubic miles of water. It's described as a sea by the local people and supports countless communities that live along its waters. Controversially, the river passes through Turkey into Syria and Iraq, and the construction of this dam in particular had a significant effect on the amount of water that reaches those countries. An estimated 90% of all water that makes it into the Euphrates originates in Turkey. And when the reservoir was first filling up, the river ran completely dry downstream for more than a month. Still, to this day, the countries claim Turkey is purposefully withholding water and using it as a weapon, which could well be an indication of what will happen in the coming decades elsewhere around the world, as water scarcity becomes an even bigger issue. Number 2. Fort Peck Dam, United States Of the six dams along the Missouri River, the Fort Peck Dam is by far the largest. Measuring 250 feet tall and almost four miles long, it's near to the city of Glasgow in Montana. It holds the record as being the largest hydraulically filled dam in the United States, and the reservoir it forms, Fort Peck Lake, is the fifth largest artificial lake in the country. Amazingly, at more than 130 miles long and 200 feet deep, it has a 1,500-mile shoreline, which is longer than the entire coastline of California. It's completely contained within a wildlife refuge and is hoped that this will be maintained for decades to come as a protected region of pristine western landscape. The dam was built between 1933 and 1940 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the site was chosen because of its potential for hydroelectric power generation, as well as being the ideal location for flood control along the river and to improve the quality of the water. While this has all been successful, there's one thing about this dam that's unlike any other. During construction, there was an incident that led to the dam failing and a barge being swamped by a slide of material. Eight people on board were pulled in and lost their lives, but only two bodies were recovered, which means that the remaining six were forever encapsulated within the dam structure. Number 1. Tarbela Dam, Pakistan Built between 1968 and 1976 on the Indus River in Pakistan, the Tarbela Dam is by far the largest earth-filled dam in the world. It's around 65 miles to the northeast of Islamabad and was conceived to help control water supplies in the country following the signing of the Indus Water Treaty in 1960 that designated three eastern rivers in Pakistan as exclusive to India. Measuring 485 feet high and 1.7 miles long, it covers the distance between an island and the river to the bank, with the other side blocked by two smaller dams and spillways. The Tarbela Reservoir behind it covers a surface area of 100 square miles, and with a maximum depth of 450 feet, the lake has a total capacity of 3.4 cubic miles of water. It's rarely ever filled that high, though, because the site was chosen with this capacity so it could be topped up during monsoon season and then gradually released during the dry times of the year to ensure a constant water flow downstream and through the connected irrigation channels. The power station with its 17 turbines currently has an installed capacity of 4,800 megawatts, but this will soon be expanded by almost 50% following an extension that's being funded by the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the World Bank. Despite the huge costs, the Tarbela Dam is generally regarded as a great example of how dams can be used to regulate the flow of water within a river system in a responsible way and overcome the limitations on availability of water from elsewhere. There are still major issues with flooding along the rivers in the country, but officials believe this would be far worse without protection these dams provide and argue that the construction of more will finally make flooding a danger of the past. Thank you to our channel members.